Hey guys, it's 21 Maxwell here and welcome to our first TEW WWE pay-per-view of the new decade. This is the Royal Rumble in 2020. We've got a 21 segment show here. We've actually bumped a lot of guys out of feuds uh, and into the Rumble match itself. So the match um, will be quite stacked. But at the same time, pay-per-view is actually going to last, uh, last less amount of time. And SummerSlam, so you know, it's a, a big shocker here. Is someone that usually has very long pay-per-views. I just felt like, you know, best a couple of guys up, give them the rumble, and as I say, it gives other guys a spotlight on the main card. And of course, girls as well with three women's matchups. So it's a good start. It's um, where we're going to be heading towards on a road to WrestleMania. A couple of feuds have been kind of hinted at towards in this episode. And we've had a few things happening over the course of... Um, the booking from the latter part of 2019 into the four-week build of Rumble as well. So we'll discuss those kind of feuds and storylines as we book along. We're in British Columbia and Canada here, hoping to try and strike around about 50,000 in attendance. So without further ado, let's click on with the road to WrestleMania full swing. So disappointing, it's just under 46,000 and a half, or just under 47,000, sorry, 46. 1,571 attendance in the British Columbia place. We start off just showcasing our women's athletes who are not in the main feuds. And people are going to be pushing into the new year. And it was a decent pre-show bout that had decent wrestling, but it didn't contain much heat. This saw the team of the Sisterhoods, Melissa, Abby Leif and Nicole Matthews, teaming up with Scots, Nikki Cross and Kaylee Ray as they defeated the talented Rhea Ripley, Emma, Megan Kate, and Billy Kane, Peyton Royce, and 11-13 when Nikki Cross defeated Megan Kate with the perfect storm. So a C plus 69, good showcase for a lot of the ladies there. Emma off her game, best performance on the baby face team was Emma, uh, sorry, was Billy Kate, sorry, with 74. Megan Kate with a good performance as well. Melissa with the best performance on the heel side, but we're building up the likes of Nikki Cross and Keely Ray on the SmackDown. Brand. So overall, pretty decent. Very few negatives. So yeah, good showcase of the women we're pushing forward going into the new year. We start the show, and this is going to be basically a hype video documenting people who are favourites to win the Royal Rumble. And it we've got Drew McIntyre who put Roman Reigns out of action. I don't know if it was accidentally, but he caught a bit of heat backstage. Reigns out of the Rumble. Out of SmackDown should be returning soon. But Drew's bragging about that and bragging how he's going to win the Rumble. Virgo Devitt, of course, saying, you know, he's back in the WWE. Doesn't want to associate with the Finn Balor name. And that he's going to show he's back to take over and become champion as well. Strickland and Miz have been on their feud. John Cena says it's time. He gets rid of Euro Trash. So it's been him and Daniel Bryan who are against Saxe Virginia, Pete Dunne, Marty Scurll, Will Ospreay, Tyler Bate. He's going to show that he is going to get rid of them. And he is going to become the 17-time world champion. And then Rusev and Austin Aries also played in their cases as they could be shock Rumble winners. So A-Star 96, Brodus helped David across the segments. That's his new bodyguard, Big Brodus Clay and his Brodus. A couple of good promos there, a couple of storylines gaining some heat as well. So overall, a good start to the show. Opening contest was a decent tag team match. It was a fatal four-way tag match. It was the team of Shane Thorne and Nick Miller, TM61, who defeated The Revival, the newly formed team of Dolph Ziggler and Jason Jordan, and the tag champions, the Road Brothers. In 13:32, Nick Miller defeated Dustin Rhodes for Shooting Star Press. TM61 win the tag team titles, so a BA2 there. Ziggler and Jordan is a case of mentor against learning you kind of pro the chain. I've never really given Jason Jordan a proper run since the split of American Alpha. We gave him, as I say, a little heel run, a couple of wins, but then nothing really materialised. He kept losing, Ziggler kept beating him. Ziggler then picked up some wins um, with a partner, various partners over time, offered an alliance to Jason Jordan, and they're now going to be like a kind of two really, really good wrestler tag team. So that's good for them. TM61, I felt like, deserved a title run. Um, we'll slowly phase Dustin Rhodes out back in their trainer role. He's got his one comeback run. And yeah, we'll see what happens. Cody Rhodes going forward for Revival. Solid as ever. So Kurt got hotter. A lot of good performances there. A lot of good skill improvements, mostly for Scott Dawson. Yeah, 
very happy with the opening match. Next up, we had the Tag Team Champions DIY cutting a promo, hyping up their upcoming match with the Masters of Wrestling, an A90 matchup. Champa performed poorly, which is a bit of a shock. Champa's gimmicks also get stale. Still only gained a bit of heat. Gargano hitting that a face turn. They're just really saying, you know, they finally get an opportunity and they've shown just how damn dominant they've been on the WWE roster. The match itself was a great wrestling match that had good heat. And it saw the Masters of Wrestling defeat DIY in 17-32 when Cesaro defeated Johnny Gargano with the neutralizer. This means the Masters of Wrestling finally win the WWE Tag Team titles, so our second title change. And they are shocked to know I hadn't given them a title run just as yet. So our first title run in the WWE for Chris Hero, and Cesaro picks up another championship. Solid 89 rating, which is good considering the performance-wise. The best was Gargano, an 86. But DIY have done some good stuff here. It's interesting to see how they bounce back from this. Negative-wise, do 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 Lack of hot associated storyline. Imagine we had a proper storyline behind this. We did, in my opinion, but apparently it wasn't over enough. So yeah, maybe that could have been even higher. But good performance nonetheless. And after the matchup, we just have the Kings of Wrestling, or the Masters of Wrestling as we know them here, celebrating to an A90. So good win there for them. Next up, we just had a... a Man tag just showcasing again a bit of the depth in the tag division. There's a decent matchup that saw the Usos and the Coffee Brothers defeat the New Day and the Young Bucks in 1334. When Mark Coffee defeated Xavier Woods with the Crown and Glory. B minus 76. Coffee's gimmick getting a little bit stale there. But as I say, it's just pushing new tag teams into the division. Quite worrying near the performance of both the Bucks, who usually do quite well in terms of in ring performances. But after the attack of Roman Reigns. We've basically now got the Bravehearts together, which is Drew and the Coffee Brothers, so hopefully a good push for them going forward. Next up we had the best of the Cruiserweight division in 205 Live, and it was about they had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Grand Metalik winning again, defeating Akira Tozawa, King Neville and Sammy Callahan in 1336, when Grand Metalik defeated Sammy Callahan with the Corpse Somersault sent on bomb making the fifth defence of the title. Sammy Callahan, the weak link here, is kind of thrown together at the last minute, but a good win again for the champ. A lot of good performances in there. I do feel we maybe need to either get rid of 205 Live already, which is worrying, or just trim the roster, because there is a lot of guys there that are just not getting used, and I really can't be arsed booking three shows per week. So we'll see what happens with that going forward. We are trimming a lot of people. A lot of guys have left. Um, and a lot more, as I've said, are previously just letting their contracts run down. Next up, we had about the hard, great wrestling and good heat. And we had Braun Strowman defeat Jeff Hardy in a weapon on a pole match in 1643 by a big splash. The BAT, not too particularly over over, guys, just kind of like upper mid card. Braun's dropped a good bit in overness. But okay performances from both. We're giving Jeff just a few kind of feuds before Matt comes back from rehab. Jeff's too injury prone to do a ladder match, it won't let him, he doesn't want to do them, so weapon in a pole match was the next best thing. Basically, Braun's been attacking Jeff after Jeff scored an upset victory, um, and then they've been basically using the ladder interferences every so often, just really keeping heat in this feud going forward. Next up, we're about the hard good rate wrestling and a decent action from the crowd with Charlotte defeat Becky Lynch and Kelly in English in 2101. When Charlotte defeated Becky Lynch with the figure four, winning the SmackDown Women's Championship. So a short run for Kellyanne English, but Charlotte is really pushing on here. B plus 86. She carried the match with an 85 performance. Two other good performances, but as I say, still are shown from all ladies involved. And I just felt like it's time to put Charlotte on as we start to put our WrestleMania plans in some motion. And next up, Dana Brooke cuts a promo on... Page, A Star 100, Dana's been the MVP of the series, we all know that. Gained some heat there, she came across fantastic, and she's just again showing she is the dominant female on the Raw brand. And the matchup got one of her better performances again, and about the contained superb wrestling and good heat. Dana Brooke defeated Page in 1836. By pinfall with Simone Driver, making the second defence of the Women's Championship, a B plus 87. Page sustained an undisplaced 
and Dibula fracture. So make sure that is. Both ladies with great chemistry. There was a lack of psychology, so it makes you think if they had the psychology together, this would have probably pushed into an A star match, which we've been aiming for for ages with the women. So we're getting closer. Page 186, Dana Brooke win 98 rated performance. That is absolutely frightening. Storyline continues, although we will probably move Dana into something else as she heads towards WrestleMania. So very good there. We'll see what happens with Paige, how long she's out for. Next up, Alistair Black cut a promo on Bo Dallas. This has been a feud that's been ongoing. But at the same time, it's just Alistair Black stating his claim to win the Royal Rumble. So that was a B plus 85. Win of Drew then hyping up against Roman Reigns, obviously explaining the whole situation where he injured Roman Reigns in a matchup, but it was just a ploy to give him a chance to become world champion and get to WrestleMania. So an A90 promo from Drew McIntyre. And then Fergal Devitt cuts his promo, just basically saying, you know, he's back, it's time for his redemption, he's going to show that he should not have been out of work for three years and that he still is one of the best in the world, as he wins the Rumble. So the Rumble match itself now, 30 of the top guys within the company. Don't think the rating will be great, but we'll see. BA1, as to be expected, this is why I didn't have it as the main event. I say there is two matches after it. But, um... Was about to had some great wrestling and good heat. And John Cena won the Battle Royal in 62-22. Yep, Cena wins, lol. Um, the other members of the Final Four were Baron Corbin, Zack Sabre Jr. and Fergal Devitt, with Baron Corbin being the last elimination. Corbin got the most eliminations with Zack Sabre Jr. being the Iron Man. Cena wins the Royal Rumble title. So I think it's a fourth win for Cena. I think he had two in real life, and we've given him two Rumbles in this save. It uh, just makes sense in a storyline perspective. Orton and Sabre Jr. were off their game. A couple of storylines gain, uh, sorry, advance, but lose heat. So we'll need to build them up going into the February pay-per-views. The entrants were Adam Cole, AJ Styles, and Helico, and Polo Cruz, Austin Aries, Baron Corbin, Big Cass, Big E, Bray Wyatt, Chad Gable, Christopher Daniels, Drew McIntyre, Eddie Edwards, Fergal Devitt, John Cena, Kenny Omega, Kevin Owens, Manny Andrade, Marty Scurll, Mojo Rawley, Pete Dunne, Randy Orton, Rusev, Sami Zayn, Shane Strickland, Deji Ishimori, The Destroyer Sawyer South, The Miz, Will Ospreay, and Zack Sabre Jr. A lot of skill improvements here, which is good to see. Um, a few negatives and too many competitors, but Royal Rumbles are limited. And say so we do have John Cena going to WrestleMania. The match Cena celebrates, which gets an 881 as he books his Placing the main event of WrestleMania, where he could go for that 17th World Championship, it could possibly be happening. Or could have swerved people. And while this happens as well, Roman Reigns returns from injury and he just beats down Drew McIntyre to gain some revenge. Obviously taking out the Rumble match because of Drew injuring him on SmackDown. Roman should be back in a couple of days. He's just okay to do angles, so we just thought beat him down. A star 100. Next up, we then have our first title match, and it was an exceptional matchup. The number one contender, Daniel Bryan, who won a triple threat match between him, Cena, and Zack Sabre Jr. Because of that feud, gets to the main event, faces Samoa Joe, defeats Samoa Joe in 25-52 by pinfall, meaning Daniel Bryan is world champion, or WWE champion again. 91 rated performance to Joe's 92, but most spectacular. A star 98 performance, excellent from both these guys. Really good to see. You know, that they're able to put this match up. And John Cena will be interested in all about the Daniel Bryan he challenges. Will Samoa Joe win a rematch? Or maybe John Cena jumped to SmackDown. Well, let's see what the SmackDown brand are doing afterwards. So Dean Ambrose cuts a promo just saying, you know, Roman's out of contention. It's a triple threat match between him, Seth and Jinder. He's just going to show that he has, you know, been overlooked for too long and he's going to remain champion at any means necessary. Match itself was okay, it was an exceptional matchup, and Dean Ambrose defeated Jinder Mahal and Seth Rollins in 21 22. And Dean Ambrose defeated Jinder Mahal with the headlock driver, Dirty Deeds, and making the first defence of his WWE World Heavyweight title. Jinder is a weak link, we are going to start to face him down the card now. As I say, the plans are Ambrose against someone going into WrestleMania. Jinder will probably drop to IC level, but it was a good run, he got a championship. Uh, got an IC title run as well, and was money in the bank. Good year for Jinder. 
and it'll be interesting to see how his fall from grace in this is affected, uh, how it happens in real life. So, yeah, you know, you're happy with that, and after the match, Ambrose celebrates to the crowd, booing, and it's a B plus 88. So maybe we should have made Daniel Bride some more Joe main event. But overall, the show got an A94. That's spectacular. Um, it increased our popularity in 45 regions. The only segment on the main card to draw under an 80 rating was the Usos and the Copies against the New Day in the Bucks, who, the past tag matches, still good ratings. So not overly too disappointed with that, but a good show overall. Wish I could get that A-star show overall and try to get anything close to Battleground um, in 2017, but we got the 97 rating overall and 100 match, but that day will come. And I think you've got to go with Samoa Joe and Daniel Bryan. And you know what? Dana Brooke praised for great performances. So all three will be pleased. Dana Brooke, as I say, is like the MVP of this series. And yeah, she's just been phenomenal. And yeah, we're eight weeks away from WrestleMania. So we're getting closer and closer to the big one. As I say, just trying to get as much people into the show, just try and you know, get some hot storylines and try and get a spectacular rate. So, well, Scara signs there, let's have a look. AJ sidelined, um, the world sideliner, so let's have a look. Physical, and she's out for 13 days, so that's not too bad. Her second injury in a little while, but as I say, if it's just 13 days, that's not too bad. Amorashima, it's cool, and the Rumble got fantastic reviews, that's good to see. Um, well, we do have a lot of notes here, a lot of opinions. We've got a lot of locker room leaders. Uh, national results for last month, we finished first in the US, Canada, Mexico and Japan, where we have national battles. We were looking at Trent Beretta, but I think we'll just keep him away. Marifuji's going to go to Dragon Gate, that's cool. Shane Form will give a new contract to us, and we've just given him the, the championship, so he might get a little boost in wage. Natalia, she's really just down in NXT Women's, just to really be a trainer. I think just to keep everything high, happy with her, we'll just keep her down in that kind of role. So yeah, another three years for Natalia. That should take her through to 40. Uh, Joe Coffey, John Cena likes him. Dean Ambrose really likes the talented Rhea Ripley. AJ Styles thinks that Emma's charismatic. 11k in drug testing, so quite expensive. Gergo Devitt thinks that Sammy Callahan is um, charismatic. Joe Coffey also has a fan of Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch likes him. And Pete Dunne does not like the Destroyer. Sawyer South. Paige obviously explaining that injury. Xavier Woods does need to pick up some wins, so we'll probably like to give him a few wins in the future. His overness is down at 60 again, if we just look at his popularity quickly. It's kind of been that same kind of level, never really higher than what it is, but then small drops here and there. And finally, buy rate was a 4.73. So again, we're never going to top our highest ever buy rate. Um, if I just quickly show you a few things. Top 100. For some reason, um, so I actually want to check where this actually drew. So that was Royal Rumble. 2020, um, 36 best show ever, so that's not too bad. We have been getting a lot of shows out of the park, which is good to see. Um, but as I say, that battleground will always remain a top show. And yeah, a couple of shows have came close, a couple of smackdowns and that. But um, nothing closest would have been November 2019, the World Grand Prix final did okay. But in terms of buy rates, um, the first year, I don't know what I've done. I've clearly glitched something because the buy rates were so much higher in 2016 and 2017. I don't know if it was a patch or I changed anything in settings. But um, buy rates are sort of kind of been like at this kind of level since the closest we got to WrestleMania. So I don't think we'll ever see those high buy rates again. But the 5.25 seems to be the highest we've had recently. Uh, Rumble was basically our fourth in this new generation. So we'll go with that as a fairly successful show. Um, actually the same as it drew last year, quite interesting enough, so that's quite cool. But yeah, things are going good, um, still a national company, but as I say, it doesn't really matter, we've got 443 million in the bank. We've got a lot of unhappy people there because they were not in the Royal Rumble, we just click, Bailey was unhappy because she wasn't on the Royal Rumble. 
jewelers there, but we'll give them a bit of money anyway, keep them happy. Um, people like homicidal go. Shabata's back, but Shabata's pretty much just coming back as a kind of tribute thing. It's him and him and Hideo Itami back on the Raw roster. We've just given them an opportunity just to kick the shit out of people because both have got declining physical ability, so can't really push them higher. Apart from that, Gallows wasn't a rumble, neither was Kalisto, Enzo. It's just small things like that. Obviously, because I'm happy because he's probably been left off that many shows. But we'll see what happens with Dolph going forward. As you see there, Alex Shelley's leaving tomorrow, if we actually look at here. So Shelley's going, Ashley Lane's going, Homicide's going, Marafuji's going, Jess got a new contract, Bree I'm unsure of. Um, looking forward as well as a couple of guys there, Dustin will probably go. Nakajama will go. There's quite a few in the upcoming weeks and months. But overall, the size of the company is good. Bit of meeting sees that Dean Ambrose is our main guy. Somehow Dolph Ziggler is still fifth here, despite never having a proper push. In fact, they had a decent run last April. Has been downhill in the last year. Could he be someone that you know has a good run in 2020? As you see, he is 39 now. It's a good sign that these three are in their kind of prime, 33, 34, nearly 40 though for Orton. And Ziggler is quite worrying. A lot of people though in the next big things that we should be pushing. Same. The hot prospects are declining physical ability, is obviously why we're not using the likes of Cena as much. AJ Styles and, as I say, Chris Jericho. It's really disappointing to say that Cena and Styles are there because his stats have just crippled. It's so annoying. Because AJ is the man. But that's it for this episode, guys. I say we are now, if we just quickly look at our schedule, on the road to No Way Out in the second week of February. That is going to be, if we just quickly look, a SmackDown pay per view. So SmackDown will come first before Ross Fastlane. And then in the fourth week of March at WrestleMania, so five week build to WrestleMania. 36, I did actually figure that out there. So yeah, things are good. The save is fun as always. And yeah, it's just a case of that transition period again. Whereas I say we'll have a superstar shake up when we hit April and we'll probably add a few people as well. Maybe have a few call ups from development. So cheers for watching guys. Any comments are obviously deeply appreciated and a like, share, subscriptions as well. Always appreciated, always. Let me know how your saves are getting on. How you felt the card went. Are you happy with some of the results? Are a bit disappointed? Any predictions for the WrestleMania card? Let me see who scores the most correct matches. But cheers for watching, guys, and I shall catch you later. For all the way out. Bye bye.